Hey Yogi, thank you so much for tuning in. This is another arm balance tutorial. Today we're breaking down peacock pose, Mayurasana. Before we begin, please make sure that you are warmed up and that especially your wrists are warmed up. As you can imagine, we're gonna be putting our entire body weight onto our wrists and hands. So it's very, very important that you are warmed up, especially in the wrists. If you don't know what to do to warm up the wrists, or the body, then please do other videos on this channel, our yoga flow classes on this channel. If you're looking for more exercises to warm up the wrists, we have a video only on the wrists, wrist placement, wrist health, wrist warm up exercises. We will link that in the description below. It also really helps you to progress with this arm balance. If you watch the plank pose and chaturanga tutorial on our channel, we broke those two poses and many other poses down, just like we're gonna do for this one. We will link that also in the description. Now before we begin and to ensure that you are successful with your arm balance and with your peacock pose today, it's important that you subscribe to this channel if you are not yet and you're just watching from the sidelines and you're just watching our videos, you like them, but you're actually not hitting the like button and you're not hitting the subscribe button. And it's very important if you want to progress with your arm balance that you do that first. Otherwise, you will not be able to do peacock pose if you don't hit this triangle in the corner. Hit the subscribe button there, and then you can come back to this pose, and then I think we're pretty confident you will, you will nail this peacock pose, Mayurasana, today. Everyone is welcome to give this a try. We always encourage you to play around in your practice and explore different movements and arm balances. The only person that we would recommend not do this class is someone that's pregnant. So if you are carrying, then please skip this arm balance for very obvious reasons. You're putting a lot of weight onto your abdomen and your core, and it's just not the best arm balance pose for you right now. With almost every yoga pose, we begin with the foundation of the wrist placement, the wrists, and then we move up through the rest of the body. So let's start with the wrists. Placement of your hands in peacock traditionally is your fingertips are pointing straight back towards the back of the mat, but that actually puts a lot of strain on the wrists and the benefits of, of having your fingers all the way back is really not that much. So uh, it's not worth putting that extra weight on the outside cartilage of the wrist. So instead we like to teach it where we rotate our wrists so that our fingers are 45 degrees out. So instead of straight back, Instead of straight out to the side, it's right in the middle, 45 degrees. So your wrists are a little bit even more narrow than shoulder distance apart. And then for the women, you'll bring your arms under and tuck it under. You wanna get your elbows as low as you can on your body and your pelvis because that's gonna help you to uh, not have to shift as far forward when you come down. So basically you'll place the hands down 45 degrees, and then we'll show you a, a first variation that you'll come into to practice it, and then we'll switch over and Flo will show you the full variation. Very important to again understand this, this teeter-totter principle of leaning forward and back, and so in the full expression, your legs are fully straight, which is a lot of weight pulling you back, which is very hard in the beginning when you're new to learning this pose. This is why we're gonna do the legs bend variation so you have less weight pulling your back and it's a little bit easier and more accessible to come into it and lean forward. Exactly. So tuck the <laughs> arms under. Get the elbows as low as you can into your abdomen. Keep the legs bent. Bring the feet together or touching. And then again, just like all arm balances, your fingertips become your brakes. And that's what's helping you balance as you come forward and back. Now everything is set up and the core is engaged and everything's like strong here. Now to come into it and bring the knees off the ground, she's really only quote unquote shifting forward. And then to lift the legs up, you actually have to use your back body and your back body strength to lift everything up and keep it lifted so that everything from the shoulders, hips, knees is in a straight line parallel to the ground. And then come back down. Very good. Using your fingers as your brake, as in all the arm balances and handstands. But since you're shifting more forward and there is no fingers, you really have to focus on just shifting enough forward and you still use your fingers as your brakes that hold you back from coming back out of it. 
It's different than other arm balances where you're actually shifting forward into the fingertips and then you balance forward. In this one, you're actually shifting forward, you balance kind of backwards. I'll switch and have you do the full, and then I'll explain a little bit more of the teeter-totter concept. Yep, so you can try this out that we just showed. And then from there to go to the full expression, you would want to come into this pose that she just did first and then start to extend your legs back. And you will notice how much more you have to shift forward. We'll point it out specifically for you. So for the guys, you can also go with the arms around if you want to. Or you can go just straight down. I actually still like to bring the arms around and just bring the elbows close together. Then 45 degrees, you set everything up here. Feel the fingertips. I start to shift forward with the legs together. So what's, what's important is that when you come forward, now you can lift up, but you really want to engage the back body to lift everything up higher. Now to extend the legs back, I have to, to shift, shift forward. even more forward. Keep the back body strong. So he's really engaging everything along the whole back side to get that lift. Similar to locust pose, when you're down on the ground, everything is lifted. You're really engaging everything in the backside body. And you saw with his hands, too, that they're not shoulder distance apart. They're much closer than that. A lot closer, yeah. So that the elbows are basically sitting inside the crest of your pelvis. Um, so they're not on the outside of the hips, they're actually tucked in. Mm -hmm. And so then all of your weight is, of course, going down into the elbows and then down into the hands. But it's less of a, I just hang out here and relax and let gravity pull you down into the forearms. It's more of like a lifting up. And this is why locust is such a good preparation for this pose. So when you're on your belly, and then you lift everything up. So this pose, locust, pose or locust, any variation of locust, is so important to teach you this lifting up that you will need for peacock and also for the one-handed variation, which we will show in a future video. Let's try it one more time to come into it and extend the legs back. Now pay, pay, pay more attention on how much I'm shifting forward as the legs extend back. Find that placement. Lift everything up, extend, and shift. To release, you bring the knees down, and then slowly start to release, and slowly, slowly inhale, because there's lots of pressure on your diaphragm too and your abs, so you really want to take it with the inhale nice and slow when you come out of the pose and not rush it. This is a pretty strong pose, lots of weight on the hands. It's very different than any other arm balances where of course all your body weight is on your hands too. But it just feels very different. This feels like a lot more weight on your hands because of the structure of the pose. Very different than for example crow pose where you actually feel a lot lighter than uh, doing peacock. Because all of that weight is pressing into your your yep. stomach, your core, your abs, it, it feels weird. So if you're new to this pose, take it easy. Do the first modification with legs bent. Try it out, see if you can hold it for five, 10 seconds, and then you can start to extend the legs and play around with it. If you're worried to fall forward or that your head is gonna hit the ground, then uh, engage the back muscles even more to lift the body into that locust. Otherwise, you can just grab a pillow and place it underneath your head, just like you can do in all arm balance poses, just until you get used to that feeling in your body of that teeter-totter. Very important to practice that lifting up. We see that actually being the number one thing that people don't do enough, because also our lifestyle today is not much where you need a lot of back strength to like lift up from the ground like this or in this position. When you're sitting so much, you actually lose lots of the strength. So this might be very challenging for you in the beginning because you don't have that back strength. So working on locust, basically just doing our classes, we usually have locust in every single class for that reason. So you can just practice those or specifically work on locust, any variation, hands to the body or arms out to the sides or even arms up and over your head as you lift everything up to really work on that back strength. 
And it feels weird in the beginning, but over time it will feel better and more comfortable, just like everything new that you're learning. Thank you so much for watching, doing this arm balance with us today, or just watching and now practicing on your own. Know that just like any arm balance and any new skill, it takes time and practice to get familiar, to get comfortable with it. So it's really up to you to put in the work now over the next weeks and months to integrate this practice and get comfortable with this uh, pose and integrate that into your practice. Peacock is not really a pose that's easy to integrate into your flow practice if you're taking an online class or a class at a studio. It's not like crow or a handstand where you can easily come into it and there's going to be many opportunities for you to come into this arm balance or like we mentioned in previous videos like a side crow coming into it from a chair twist. It's a uh, in that sense a little bit awkward because you really have to do something very different. It's not that easy to integrate, but we recommend what you could of course do at any point in your practice. You can always take any modifications as always. That means also possibly arm balances and just throw them into your practice in a studio or online. What you could do is coming in from a plank pose or from some kind of tabletop. So if you're in a down dog, set the knees down, come to tabletop, come into peacock if you know that you're going to be in this downward dog for 10 breaths or something like this, whatever the instructor says, but for a longer period of time. Also, if you are in a plank for a longer time and you just want to come into this, you can come in to peacock from plank pose. Yeah, or after doing locust as well. Yeah. So, uh, and then, yeah, I think the best time would be during that downward dog break where you have five or 10 breaths in downward dog where the rest of the class is resetting their breath and you're flying high. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just like make, a beautiful make peacock. <laughs> yes, yeah, like a beautiful bird. So just make the pose work for you. Integrate it wherever it feels best for you. Like we said, it's a little bit of an awkward pose because it's not as easy uh, as a smooth transition to come into it. So it's really up to you. Most importantly, keep the wrists safe. That's very, very important. And we'll see you in the next one. Have fun. Namaste.